Hi everyone. In this video today, I want to talk about home prices and real estate here in Fairfield, Connecticut. There's been a lot of change since the last video I did in 2020 regarding home prices and values here in Fairfield, Connecticut. And I also want to give you an overview of the real estate in the entire town. I am also going to share with you the average sales price of homes by neighborhood, because if you are searching or thinking of moving here, that you may find very helpful because at the end of the day, your search always comes down to what you can afford. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Lockwood, a local realtor with Caldwell Banker Realty here in Fairfield, Connecticut. And today I wanna to talk to you about home prices and home affordability in town. And also about the real estate in town and the prospects of home prices in 2023. So if this content you're interested in, give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. So let's get right down to it. Let's first just give a general overview of the town of Fairfield. I have done previous videos about the town and details about what is so great about living here and the pros and cons. So make sure you check out those videos. So giving you just basic real estate and town information about Fairfield, there are 62,000 residents in town and is across 30 square miles so if you break it down by population density it's just over 2,000 people per square mile so if you want to compare that to the town or city you're living in or to neighboring towns here as an example north of us is Easton a much more rural town and they are 275 people per square mile in Bridgeport which is the city next door there's 9,100 people per square mile and in Westport 1,400 people People per square mile. So within our vicinity and within the, the state of Connecticut, we are considered a medium-sized town. So let's talk about the real estate here in Fairfield. If you are coming from other parts of the country that where they are developing a new construction, there is no vacant land here to build on. Everything has pretty much been built on. So when you hear about new construction in the area, it is basically builders that are finding homes that are old and maybe distressed or have not been taken care of, a dilapidated, and they level it and build a new house. And that's where we find most of our new construction. A majority of it right now is in the beach area of town, but you will find it all across town. You find it in the beach area because it is a sought after area of town. People love to live by the water and close to town, which is why uh, that is where you find many of your new constructions, but you will find it sporadically throughout town. Now within this town, 77% are single family homes. Only 8% are condos and townhouses and the rest are apartments. So if you are looking for condo living, just know in this area, we have, we do have condo complexes, but it only accounts for about 8% of the, the housing here in town. Uh, we have seen a big increase in apartment living lately. We have apartment buildings that are seen to be going up just about everywhere. There's luxury apartments, um, there's apartments by the train stations, and they're still building. So apartment living has uh, increased, um, but you can also find landlords that, that have investment properties where you can rent a house or you can rent a condo. So it's not just apartment living, but uh, rental is a whole variety of items within town. Now let's talk about housing prices within the area. Now, when you listen to people talking about average sale price and median sale price, there are two different numbers. Average sale price is taking all of the sales in a particular time period divided by the number of houses sold, and that is your average sale price. Median sale price is if you say you sold 10 homes, it's the median numbers, the one right in the middle. So the purpose of this video, I'm gonna give you the average and the median sale price of the entire town, and then I'm gonna go and give you the average sale price by neighborhood. And remember that all the neighborhoods are different. They all have a different vibe to them. The topography is different. Some of the houses are closer and denser together. And so it's important to check out these neighborhood videos that I've done previously so you can really understand the neighborhoods to understand the pricing. But first, let's talk about the whole town. The entire town average sale price at the end of December to we're moving into 2023 was a million sixty five thousand so that is the average price for the entire town for single-family homes and if you're looking at the median sale price the one right in the middle it's eight hundred and eighty one thousand dollars now when you look at the variety of homes in town 
30% of them are priced between $400,000 and $600,000, 30% of them are for $600,000 to $950,000, and 30% of them are over $950,000 and into the millions. So you can see there's a wider range of values within the town. I'm gonna to give you a brief overview by neighborhood, and I'm gonna start in the beach area. So first, Southport, which is its own zip code, its own little town, where they're on the water, um, many historical homes are there, and then there's also homes across at I-95, more traditional homes in that area. The average sale price for Southport is $1,460,000. And then if we move over to the Sasco area, which is just over the bridge, this area is a combination of some traditional homes, but also some grand multi-million dollar homes that overlook Long Island Sound. So it is a wide variety here of pricing. And in this area, the average sale price is $2.6 million. Now moving over to the beach area, this area again, I mentioned before, is sought after for, by some people. They love to live by the water and the town and the whole walkability and accessibility to all the amenities. There is not a lot of property in this area because it is beach living, so it is house, house, house. Um, the average sale price here is a million three fifty. This is where you're going to see a lot of new construction, which sometimes can skew the average number up and down month by month. But basically, you're going to be spending a million three fifty or more in this area to live by the water. And then the next area is Greenfield Hill. This is the only area of town when you look at this neighborhood map that I have. It's a pretty large area. It is two acre zoning. So if you wanted more property, some areas are more rural, you will get um, larger homes because of the property here. And the average sale price in this area is $1,406,000. And I did do a previous video on Greenfield Hill neighborhood. I'll put all the links below of all my uh, neighborhood videos so you can get a sense of each neighborhood and how they're different. And next I'm going to combine the Sturgis Center and University area. This is a pretty large area when you combine them all. It's north of I-95 and the entire area surrounding Fairfield University. There's lots of different types of neighborhoods, lots of different types of homes, and a variety of price points. But the average sale price in this area is $761,000. Next, we have the Lake Hills and Lake Mohegan area. This area surrounds Samp Mortar Lake, the Lake Hills area, and then the Lake Mohegan area is to the east of that. So if I combine the two of them, there's lots of, again, different variety of homes. You might get a little bit more property in this area than you would in other parts of town. You could get 0.25 to 0.5 acres as opposed to a smaller lot. And in the Lake Hills area, it averages $992,000. And in Lake Mohegan, the average is $752,000. Next, we have the Stratfield area of town. This is the northeastern part of town. And these homes are so charming. Many of them were built in the 1930s and 40s. And uh, this average sale price in this area is $651,000. And lastly, we have the Tunxis Hill and Grassmere area, and they are in the eastern part of town. Smaller properties and lots, and this area averages $450,000. It is close to I-95 and the train stations. Now you have a breakout by area of how much housing costs throughout town. So let's talk about what is expected of home prices going into 2023. We are still seeing a lack of inventory. And when inventory comes to market, it gets absorbed because we still have high demand. Every offer I have personally had in the last couple weeks have all been multiple offers. It's not as frenzied as it was back in 2020 and 2021. Instead of 10 offers, there might be three or four offers that you're competing against, but demand still outweighs supply, which will continue to have an impact on home prices. If you'd like to talk more detail about the area, I'll put a Calendly link below where you can book a call with me or feel free to call or text me anytime. I would be happy to help. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.